Okay, uh, so far in the discussions of the topics that we had, we have seen what is a computer network and uh, what is uh, the applications of network and the concept of network hardware and software. So in the last video, we have seen the uses of computer networks and we said that the design of network is uh, basically having both uh, hardware and software. The hardware makes uh, not only the machines, the computers, the servers, the clients, servers, which are called the end systems or host. And then we have the uh, communication subnet or subnetwork, which is meant for uh, transmitting the data from one end to the other end. So now we take exclusively the discussion on the network hardware part. So what governs the hardware? What are the uh, parameters that govern the hardware? See, the type of computer network is uh, essentially uh, dependent on uh, two things. Number one, the transmission technology used within the network and number two, <coughs> the size of the network. So based on these two parameters, we classify uh, different networks. So of course, that classification will come later point of time. So we need to first understand uh, the parameters. What are the parameters which are used for uh, Parameters which are used for uh, classification of the networks. Okay, so that there are two types of transmission technology. One is called the broadcast networks, and the other is called the point-to-point -point networks. So, what is broadcast and what is point-to-point? -point? Let us see. In the case of broadcast network, I'll take an ink. In the case of broadcast network, we will have one cable as such. Is a cable to which all the computers or the communication entities, that's what I say, com communicating entities or the computers are connected like this. So this cable is called broadcast medium. Okay. This is one type of design, broadcast networks. So all these, all these clients, all these machines, will use this communication cable or the broadcast medium for ensuring communication. Of course, there are pros and cons, there are advantages and drawbacks of this approach. Advantages and drawbacks of this approach. So the ideology here is uh, basically if this computer want to communicate with this computer, then it will broadcast it. Right? What is the meaning of broadcast? Sending it to all. So whatever message one computer send it, that will be received or that will be seen by all, everybody. Because it is there common to all, that's why it is called broadcast, just like you say radio broadcast. So in the case of radios, uh, if, if the radio station transmits something that will be received by all the receivers, that's why it is called broadcast. So the meaning of broadcast is sending to all. So once I send any message on this communication link, it will be seen by all of them, that is called broadcast. So one type of network is broadcast networks. You might have seen in our lab, our college lab. Uh, the most of the networks are implemented like uh, uh, in this form. The traditional or the primitive networks are implemented in this form, broadcast medium. So generally, the if you have heard of the term called local area network, the local area network in the beginning were all implemented as broadcast networks. Okay, so that is one type. Second type is point-to-point -point network. So what happens in point-to-point? -point? As the name say, there exists a communication link between every computer uh, from one computer to another computer. Like I have, this is a link. Okay, the link present between these two. I may have a link present here. I may have a link present here. I may have a link present here. Something like this. This is called point-to-point. So here I don't have broadcast. Like for example, if, if this machine send data, you can check here, it won't be sent to all. It will be sent to receive by this, or if I send over this communication channel, only this will will see. If I send over this communication link, only this machine will see. If I send the message over this communication link, only this machine will see. So that is a fundamental difference between broadcast and point to point networks. All right. So always remember, once again, I repeat the type of network type of network, kind of network is essentially governed by two things I am saying. One is transmission technology, which we have talked just now and the other is called the scale of the network, means the size. How many machines are there or what, to what size it can grow, that is meant by scale, scale or size. 
So what uh, what is transmission technology? I have explained to you. So every network will either follow broadcast type of design or point to point of design. I hope uh, the point is clear with regard to what is broadcast and what is point to point. Quickly, what I will do is I will also show in the form of PPT uh, the same thing. We'll have a, a summarized discussion. All computer networks can be classified based on transmission technology used and the scale of the network. So there are two types of transmission technology. Just now I said point to point and broadcast. So what happens in point to point? Connect individual pairs of machines. Information from source node to destination node is sent in short messages, generally called packets. So here, in point to point, in point to point, the information which flows is generally named by technical term called packets. Okay. Even as in broadcast links or broadcast network. Communication channel is shared by all the machines on the network. I have already shown earlier, and packets sent by any machine are received by all other nodes. Kindly pay attention. All other nodes, okay? It can be seen by all the nodes. That is broadcast. And uh, now coming to the classification based on classification based on network scale, okay? Classification. So. Earlier I have presented to you transmission technology. Now we'll see the other side that is network scale. The other type of uh, classification of networks is based on the scale or the size. So alternative criteria for classifying networks is by scale. Again, I'm repeating scale means basically the size. Distance is important as a classification metric. Size, distance, that is what I'm trying to say, are used at different scales. Like what are the various types of networks here they have listed out one is LAN the other is MAN metropolitan area network wide area network wireless networks home networks internet networks these are the different types of networks based on the scale and size and usually we'll take a one by one but before that there are a couple of more things I have to uh, tell you that also I will tell and then we'll come back to the classification by size so transmission technology is one parameter that classifies uh, one type of network either broadcast or or uh, point to point networks and uh, the other is uh, what we say modes of transfer this also is, is an important term that you should be familiar with modes of transfer data transfer okay what does this mean what does this mean let us try to understand this means how the data will go from one machine to another machine what mode can it go there are three types of modes of transfer you should remember one is called unicast mode the other is called multicast and third is called broadcast Okay, so what is unicast? Unicast is sending from one machine to another machine. I will tell like this. This is machine one, okay, and machine two. So only these two are communicating one way or two way, whatever you say, okay. This is called unicasting. Sending from one source to one destination is unicast. Like if the teacher call one student from the class to his room and then communicate to him, that is like unicast. Sending from data from one machine to exactly another machine, a one to one is called unicast. So I will write unicast as one to one. Multicast. Multicast means sending from one machine source, machine M1 source, to not one but many many machines machine 2 machine 3 machine 4 i generally call subset of machines group of machines so one to many one to many like for example the teacher may tell in the class following so students rule number 1 2 3 4 5 6 up to 10 please come and meet me so i'll call those out of all 60 students, I call 10 students to my room and communicate with them, talk to them. That is called multicast. Got my point? Sending one to one, talking to only one student by calling him in the class or calling him in his room, faculty room, that is one to one. In the same faculty room, if I call a group of students and communicate to them, that is multicast. Broadcast means one to all. 
machine sending data to all the machines all of them this broadcast radio broadcast like if the teacher is speaking in the class that is broadcast teacher is speaking to few students in his in his room not in the class multicast teacher speaking to only one student in his room that is unicast so the type of communication the modes of transfer data transfer can be either unicast multicast or broadcast so this terminology and the definitions are also very important and you have to understand and remember them so any communication that takes place will be either following unicast mode or broadcast mode or multicast mode is that clear okay so this is one next uh, we go back to our uh, presentation types of networks right so lan wan and wan may follow unicasting may follow multicasting may follow broadcasting so we don't bother here what is the uh, modes of transfer so let us see now what is uh, uh, meant by basically classification based on network scale so based on network scale what is the classification kindly see means the size so suppose for example if the distance is within 1 meter if the communication is taking place between the entities which are apart within 1 meter the distance between the processors are only 1 meter then it is called personal area network like for example if i have a a computer and then i have some bluetooth device connecting to my keyboard then that may be like your personal area network a, a, a Bluetooth mouse connected to my PC that is like your personal area network. But however, if the network is within the span of a room or building or one campus, like for example in our CSC block of the college, if I have a network that may go up to maybe 100 meters or 10 meters or maybe maximum it can go up to 1 kilometer. So size is going up to 1 kilometer. Kindly check that. Sorry. Up to 1 kilometer. 10 meters to up to 1 kilometers. This is the scope or the scale of a local area network. Right? Metropolitan, generally metropolitan here implies a city. So a network covering a city spanning up to maybe for example up to 10 kilometers, 20 kilometers, something like that is called metropolitan area network. So a network within a distance of 1 meter like our personal computer is speaking with digital mode, uh, I mean Bluetooth communication technology, personal area network, local area network as we have in the college campus or maybe a city if I implement then that is called metropolitan area network and if the communication network or the computer network is spanning the countries or continents then that is called wide area network. Generally wide area network can be there in one country also. We have uh, insight or uh, satellite network which is present in our based on insat satellite that is called wide area network it spans countries or even continents and the scale you can see 100 kilometers to 1000 kilometers it can it have a scope of communication scope of communication up to this distance so based on scale we classify networks as pan lan man and van and finally for the entire planet where i may use satellite communication satellite then that across the planet, tens of thousands of kilometers, then that is nothing but your internet. Okay. So it is covering the whole globe, whole planet as such, the internet. So that is the classification. So now let's have a brief uh, regard with regard, brief discussions of all of these pan, LAN, WAN, so that you can have clarity of understanding. So personal area network allows devices to communicate over the range of a person just now I said I'm sitting on the desktop and then using all these devices common example is wireless network that connects a computer with its peripherals so if I have a PC or a laptop to which I have connected a wireless wireless uh, keyboard or wireless mouse and other peripherals that is nothing but a personally network Bluetooth is a network so this example is Bluetooth is a network designed for a short range wireless network to connect components without wires so that is person means it allows a person to communicate like for example, I told you just now, I told you just now, this is my pan, uh, pan. My system is there with Bluetooth connectivity of connected mouse, printer, keyboard like that. Or a base station is there for example, connected to wired network and then base station, these machines are connected through wireless links, radio links. That is nothing but uh, example of wireless networks. Okay. Next. 
okay whereas a local area network is a private owned network like in we can have in our college or we can have in our office that operates within the nearby single building like home office or factory local area networks are widely used to exchange uh, uh, to uh, use for resource sharing like i can share printers i can share peri hard disks i can share plotters and other devices and types of lans can be either wired or wireless it means i can have a broadcast medium in the form of wired wired cable or maybe in the form of wireless both are familiar to you i don't have to talk much about that now when i come to wired and wireless lans there is some uh, some important issue that i have to bring it to your notice let's see one the wired lan standard is called iter now what is this standard this ieee i hope you know it uh, it is an international body right meant for formulating rules and regulations for the implementation of networks and other products okay i triple e uh, it has it every standard is given a number like 802.3 is given a number for uh, uh, popular net popular network wide network by name ethernet what is ethernet ethernet is a type of lan ethernet is a type of lan which comes in the category of wide and the, the 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 net or the lan that we implement in our lab is basically based on ethernet design so it follows a protocol called ethernet in second unit we are going to talk about this ethernet okay ether is the name of the material based on you which is used for implementing that communication cable so that's why it is called ethernet okay Uh, so ethernet uh, standard is provided by ieee what is ieee again i am telling ieee is an international body which is meant for uh, formulating or promoting standards for the implementation of networks and other related products so it is not just for uh, uh, proposing standards for uh, uh, networks but also many other like operating system standards also it has and other products also non computer science products also ieee basically for electronics and electrical this institute for electronic and electrical engineering ieee so the wireless lan standard ieee 802.3 wide lan standard ieee 802.3 is for ethernet which is one type of uh, network like example we have that in the lab each computer speaks the ethernet protocol and connects to a box called a switch with a point to point link in the next diagram i will show you about that whereas in wireless lan we also have wireless lan in our college like there are many wireless links you i am sure you are able to access the internet through your smartphones by means of wireless links so how is that arrangement done we you have we have a component called access point okay wireless access point which are fixed at different places then we we'll, we may have a wireless router or a base station to relay the packets between the wireless computers and the internet so that is called wireless lan so wired like we have ethernet lan or wired lan specifications in ieee 802.3 like that we have standards for ieee uh, wireless lans what are the standards like 802.11 which is popularly called wifi so wifi is the name of the network it's standard what is standard standard specifies the rules and regulations to be followed for the implementation of that network so wireless fidelity wireless network wifi so just like ethernet name is wifi here the ethernet standard is a02.3 wifi standard is in 802.11 so therefore i generally advise the student that during your time of leisure when you are free just browse through what is ieee what is ieee 802.3 what does it contain 802.11 contains standards for what what exactly is wifi these technical things you can uh, improve your knowledge by uh, browsing the net like that okay so these are wired and wireless lan so lans are of two types wired lans and wireless lans examples one of the popular commercial popular example of wire wired lan is uh, ethernet lan and its standard is 802.3 wireless lan popular wireless lan is wifi and its standard is 802.11 got it wi max there is another wi max you might have heard so wi max is also an import, is an example of a wireless network its standard is found in 802.1516 like this so there are different standards which are proposed for different networks so from interviews perspective from general knowledge per 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 perspective it is important that you should remember these standards so this standard is used for which network or proposing standard for which network then you should say like that okay the next what <coughs> oh, sorry so that's what i was uh, trying to say look at this this is a uh, example of 802.11 network earlier diagram also i have shown different networks are connected to this access point which we write in short as ap access point 
This may be connected to wide network for internet purpose. And therefore, this machine can access internet via this access point. This arrangement is there in our college also, is it not? Now, when it comes to Ethernet, maybe the arrangement can be like this. I will have a switch. You can find these switches in the lab. If you have not seen, sometime you go and check it, Ethernet switch. And through these ports, uh, the machines are connected by means of cables. These are cables. These cables will be examples like it can be a fiber optic. But generally, if in the lab, we don't use, but I'm telling. Or maybe coaxial cable. Coaxial. I'm writing in short. Or maybe it can be a twisted pair. Most of the time we use this and in the later part of unit 1 we are going to have a detailed discussion on this. Different types of cables, fiber optic, coaxial, twisted pair and then the wireless uh, medium, all that we are going to have a discussion in the later part of unit 2, unit 1, uh, second part of unit 1. So like uh, general, general uh, term which is used uh, for this uh, is called cat, cat 5 cable, cat 6 cable like that. Okay, which will be a twisted pair like or maybe coaxial type. So here I will have a RJ545 connector as you see and then inside the motherboard of this I will have uh, what is called the NIC card, network interface card, ethernet card. You might have seen ethernet card, right? So it is a hardware which is connected to the system which is generally called an NIC and then I will have a communication port here, RJ45 connector, you connect that LAN cable, right? That LAN cable, people generally call it this as LAN cable also, data cable, LAN cable, CAT5 cable, which is twisted pair or maybe coaxial cable, maybe fiber cable, anything. So this is the arrangement. So this is for wired and this is for wireless configuration. Now, uh, as I said, local area networks basically follow two types of design. I have already told you either they follow broadcast type, right, or maybe following uh, in a point to point. But for LAN generally, it is it follows broadcast. But within broadcast, again, I have two topologies. What do you mean by topology? Structure. Topology of the graph is a complete graph, incomplete graph, right, uh, or partially complete graph, something topology. Topology means structure. So this, is this not doing like a graph? So that's why you follow graphical topologies. So this is cable broadcast medium. So this is called bus topology. This is a bus on which you carry all the messages. Or if not bus, it can be a ring topology. The broadcast medium is connected in the form of a ring. Like it looks like point to point, but in fact it is not point to point, it is called a ring topology. So for local area network design, there are two types of structures, structuring the network, two types of design. One is called bus and the other is called ring. Okay. Now the bus, both wireless and wide broadcast networks can be further divided. Wired, look at this. This is again an important one. Both wired and wireless broadcast net networks can be further subdivided as static design or dynamic design. Static or dynamic. So what is static? Please follow carefully. A typical static allocation would be would be to divide the time into discrete intervals and use a round robin algorithm. So like here, what problem may happen, I will tell you. In the broadcast network, I, the major problem that can have is collisions. Like if these two machines send the data at the same time, it will result in collision. Or if multiple machines try to access the uh, cable at the same time, it will lead to collision. To avoid collision, there are two approaches. One is called static approach, the other is called dynamic approach of managing. That is what it says. So what happens in static allocation? Divide the time into discrete intervals and use the algorithm like round robin as we saw in operating system. Allowing every machine to broadcast only when its time slot comes up. So we divide it into time. We divide the time into slots. So slot 1 will be meant for this, slot 2 will be meant for this, slot 3 only this machine can transfer, slot 4. Then once it is over, then only this fellow will get it on. So now I will not have because every machine has its own fixed time slot. So therefore no question of any collision. So this is called static approach. What is the drawback? During my time slot, if I don't have any data to send, then that will lead to waste of channel capacity. So static design of sharing the communication bandwidth will lead to channel capacity or would lead to wasted of channel capacity, wasted of bandwidth. So we go for a dynamic design. In dynamic allocation method for a common channel, we either follow a centralized approach of managing the channel or decentralized approach. What happens in centralized channel allocation? There will be one master station, okay, is a single entity, for example, the base station, as in cellular networks, which determines who goes next. So what happens? Let me explain. In the case, suppose if I'm using dynamic approach of managing this or dynamic channel allocation, then one of the machine, like for example, this machine will be marked as master. So he will, this machine will be controlling 
who is going to send the data next so that is called centralized approach of managing in a dynamic category otherwise in decentralized channel allocation method there is no central entity each machine must decide itself whether to transmit or not so that is so we are going to have a detailed discussion on this also later point of time but here as if as of now you can only remember what is the bus what is uh, uh, bus technology what is the uh, star top uh, ring te technology and then broadcast network point to point networks so that is uh, quite sufficient enough to remember as of now now coming to metropolitan area network man covers the entire city city based network like in hyderabad we can have a network the best known examples of man, man are like or maybe you can check take this also cable television networks the cable tv network that we have in the city that is called a, a man the latest man which has been standardized in ieee is vimax which i told earlier ieee 802.15 2.16 i put so 802.16 is exactly for vimax which spans uh, the entire city as such so that is metropolitan area network an example something look like this so i can take the data from channel and then there will have a head end and then the junction box are there and this is the this is the machine connecting to the internet okay and then these are the several localities which are present for cable access so this is spanning the whole city you can say so these are different lanes or different uh, areas within the city communicate communicate uh, ensuring or uh, taking data from internet taking data from other uh, radio stations and so on all right so this is metropolitan area network now coming to the wide area network spanning the entire continent spanning the entire country for example spans a large covers a large geographical area of a country or a continent satellite networks cellular networks are examples of wide area networks and the biggest wide area network that spans the entire planet is the internet as such so each of these offices contains computers called host so here we have host what are host these are the host end systems hosts are also called end systems so often the communication is meant among the end systems and the network that connects different hosts from different offices like this network is called subnet okay so the design is very clear end systems are hosts these are the routers okay and these routers and the communication links make subnet so these are subnet so the medium which connects all the host is generally called subnet so this terminology should be clear so these are called uh, basically host the machines which you are seeing these are called the host also called end system because they are at the edge of the network and then the other other medium which consists of routers and other exchange elements here which carry the messages from one end to other end that is called communication subnet okay and these are transmission lines wired lines wireless lines all that so in most one the subnet consists of two distinct transmission lines and switching elements these are called switching elements that switch the data from one to the other end so transmission lines move bits between machines they can be made of copper wire optical fiber or even radio links that's what i said wired or wireless links switching elements are specialized computers that connect two or more transmission lines which are non normally routers so i may have several here i've shown only one router two routers but in fact two three routers in fact there can be many routers in between them if i can connect directly these two then there is no need but suppose every communication link will have a limitation to the distance that it can cover so therefore i can have multiple routers spanning the entire because the whole link cannot connect these two directly okay so that is uh, the wide area network and within that again we have types of vans like isps internet service providers or virtual private network it is an organization that provides services for accessing using or participating in internet what is isp it's an organization like if i want internet internet access i need to countries will have some what are called standard uh, companies by name isp so it's an organization that provides services for accessing using or participating in the internet it owns the network infrastructure and provides services to customers who pay for this right like this organization so this is my isp this is the internet connecting the global network worldwide network and the isp is i mean all whether it is home whether it is government or whether anybody will have to access the internet via internet service provider right like uh, airtel may be an internet service provider or maybe act fiber net may be an internet service provider like that what is virtual private network is also an example of a van 
It is used to provide private access to corporate applications and resources to remote users and offices. For security, the private network connection we established using, we'll talk about tunneling protocol right not now, maybe at a later point of time. Like uh, maybe I have a countrywide uh, Infosys network and that is meant only for Infosys employees, not for everybody. That is what I mean by private access. It's a private network. So Infosys is a big organization. TCS is a big organization, for example, spanning across the cities in the country. So if they wish to implement their own network, private network and connection may be established via tunneling. What is tunneling protocol? We'll talk about later point of time. Okay. So that is virtual private network. It is privately owned. It is not for public. This public internet service provider is for public. We, we can access it, but here it is meant only for the employees of sorry employees of the company that is why it is called virtual private network virtual because it is not physical it may have to go through several other networks as you see in the diagram so this is a local area network accessing the public network and going through but the data which flows now via this network is not meant for public it is meant for private so it looks like one network but in fact it is not one network it can go through several that is why the word virtual so virtual private network so vans are of two types uh, uh, maybe for uh, ISP public network or virtual private network. And what is internetworks or simply uh, generally people write internet in short. Now there are two things. Internet starting with the letter I small i and internet starting with capital letter internet. Now when I say internet this is our uh, global network which we are using for accessing our worldwide web global network used for accessing World Wide Web. Whereas this internet is what here a collection of interconnected networks is called an internet network or internet that's what I have written here. So you should distinguish between small internet and capital internet capital I and small i. So if I interconnect different networks and form one global network then that is called internet and the practical example of this small internet is capital internet which is the right now existing worldwide network for accessing our internet for accessing our web resources that is called global internet. So this is in contrast to the huh, here the point which I was telling you can find here. This is in contrast to the worldwide network which is in is is one specific internet which we are we, we always capitalize means we always use. The internet uses ISP networks to connect enterprise networks. So when I say capital I basically the one which we are using ISP networks to connect enterprise network home networks and many other networks. So this is about uh, the internet works. Okay. Internet works are created if different organizations have paid to construct. Okay, this is all the machine that makes a connection between two or more networks and provides the necessary translation both in terms of hardware and software. Okay, that gateway. I mean, in the internet, what it says, uh, uh, if I have one network and another network, they are connected by means of an interface which is called generally gateway. Okay, so like uh, what I'm trying to say, for example, if I have one network here and another network here, network 2 and let's say network 3 here. So if I want to interconnect them, they cannot speak because different uh, networks may follow different protocols, different protocols. So if I want to harmonize their differences, architectural differences, then these two need to be connected by means of an element called gateway, which will try to harmonize the differences that exist. So I, like if I, if I send the data from here to here, this may follow one format of data, this may follow another format of data. So this gateway will convert, this gateway will convert from one format to another format. So always networks are, in, different networks are interconnected by some gateway which will act like an interpreter, translator, interpreter or translator. Got it? So that is the gateway. That is what you say in most of the wide area networks. We require a machine that makes a connection between two or more networks and provide the necessary translation. Translation, just now I said, both in terms of hardware and software is called a gateway. So gateways are needed for this translation purpose when I'm communicating from one machine to another machine in, in the case of connecting different networks. That is the point. Very good. Okay. So then comes the next part, software that we shall see in the next video. But before that, I would like to tell one more thing that uh, what is called transmission modes, another term which I wanted to uh, introduce as part of network hardware, transmission modes. There are three modes of transfer. Earlier, uh, uh, 
uh, I, I talked about uh, uh, unicast, multicast and broadcast, right? Type of transmission. So like that now I have transmission modes in the same way but uh, slightly uh, different terminology is used here for indicating transmission modes uh, like uh, number one is called simplex. Earlier I said unicast. So part of unicast communication the mode of transfer between the two machines may follow a simplex approach. Simplex means the transmission is like unicast, this source one and destination one, but it can go only in one direction, simplex. Best example is radio. The radio station will only speak and we have to listen. I cannot communicate with the radio station, simplex, only one way. No two way communication. If I am watching TV. I have to listen to what is coming on the TV. I cannot communicate with the TV. So I am receiver and TV is the center. So one way communication, simplex communication. Second is half duplex. So this term we encounter during the communication of networks. So here I have entity host one, I say sender or dest uh, destination either way host two. So here again communication is one way, but it can it can be in other way but at a time I will write like this at a time at a time only one way best example is walkie talkie used by policemen like that uh, the small uh, set, uh, set which the policeman use walkie talkie so either he will listen and then press the button then he will speak one way at a time but both ways we can communicate right so this fellow can communicate and this fellow can communicate but one at a time walkie talkie that is called half duplex and the third and last is full duplex full duplex full duplex means the communication will take place in either way at a time either way, host one and host two full duplex like our our cell phone communication in cell phone, both of us can communicate together. So that is full duplex. So any communication that is taking place in wide area network or any form of network, local area, metropolitan area, personal area, wireless, anything between the communicating entities may follow either simplex mode of transfer, half duplex or full duplex. So I hope this, this terminology is also clear to you. So this is all about the network hardware, which become essential part of your uh, network design okay so summarizingly what we have seen so far so network hardware the types of networks are classified based on transmission technology which may follow broadcast type or point to point so what is broadcast and what is point to point we have seen modes of transfer i, I talked about data tra transfer mode unicast multicast and broadcast so what is uni and multi and broadcast we have seen and then uh, basically we have uh, seen types of networks like lan man and van then essential characteristics and then finally, we have also seen the transmission media modes which may follow between the communicating entities as either, uh, for example, simplex mode or half duplex mode or full duplex mode. So what, what, what is that? We have seen in detail. Okay. So next video, we will see network software because in the design of network, there are two things I said. One is hardware, the other is software. So we have seen the hardware part. Next, we move on to software part. We will see that. Okay.